everyone. Do you remember the Charbonneau Commission? Or, as they say in French, la Commission Charbonneau? On October 19, 2011, the Liberal Provincial Government of Jean Charest de decided to put it in place. Their mission was to investigate the potential corruption occurring in the government regarding the man managing of public contract in the construction industry. Today, I meet the star whistleblower who testified during the Charbonneau Commission, Ken Pereira, industrial mechanic and former union leader, was one of the first people to denounce corruption and bad practices in the construction industry. But let's take a look at what exactly happened last week. First, we learned last week that UPAC, the permanent anti-corruption unit, which was in charge of several investigations, including the Charbonneau Commission, would have over several years deliberately leak information to the media that delayed. These leak led to the application of the Jordan ruling for several of the accused politicians involved in the investigation. Due to this precedent, these political defendants were never found guilty or innocent simply because their trial never occurred in the first place. The charge were dismissed. The trial never occurred. To learn about that, take a look at my latest article titled Quebec Anti-Corruption Unit Orchestrated Information Leak During Investigation. But that was not the only breaking news coming out of Quebec last week. Do you know who Tony Accurso is? Well, he is a businessman and was a major suspect in the Charbonneau Commission. On June 25, 2018, Tony Accurso was found guilty for conspiracy fraud, corruption in municipal affairs, and finally breach of trust. Last week, the Quebec Court of Appeal refused to overturn his conviction, dismissing both of the appeal of his guilty verdict and his prison sentence imposed after his trial of 2018. Mr. Arcurso was supposed to be sent to prison on June 1st, but he appealed to the Supreme Court to avoid prison. Today, I will publish two reports in which I will thoroughly explain what is going on in Quebec with all this situation and more specifically, what is the involvement of Ken Pereira, who was the heart of some of the investigation and who saw the various investigative unit at work. So hi, Mr. Pereira. Um, we will start with something that is um, the mainstream use against you. Can you talk a little bit more about the fact that they say that you are a conspiracy theory and uh, they try to discredit you saying that? What do you have to say about this? Well, uh, before I was a star witness at the Charbonneau Commission, uh, I gave around 50 to 60 stories for all the mainstream media in Montreal, and absolutely none of them called me a conspiracy theorist. The second I started joining Lux Media, and we had a show together called Conspiracy Theory, mm -hmm. they started adding the unreal stuff that I'd said to the re reality. So it was just like trying to discredit me because I was exposing a lot what the me mainstream media wasn't saying, and I was exposing the government and the construction industry in particular. Mm -hmm. The main story that sorry was mostly is they told me that I, I believe that there is Nazi mines okay. in on the moon. And I had a tinfoil hat when I did that show. So if somebody knew about a first or second degree, they would have learned it quite easily that this was, I was making fun of them. Mm -hmm. But they didn't want to hear that. You know, what they wanted is I was presenting myself against Max, for Maxime Bernier, who was, uh, it was a new party, and uh, they didn't like that at all. 
they didn't call me a conspiracy theorist when they offered me a job at LACAC, which is our our um, our our leader right now in in place. They didn't know at Saint Jerome. They gave it to me on you know a silver platter. <laughs> uh, so they, I wasn't called a conspiracy a conspiracy theorist at that time. And uh, when uh, when they offered me at the federal conservative party, they also didn't call me a conspiracy mm -hmm. theorist. So it was it was mostly mainly when I started working for Lux, which is and it, it's like if I was working for Rebel News. Mm -hmm. Immediately they would start. Pick, nitpicking whatever I wrote down to try to discredit me. Mm -hmm. But the mainstream media never discredited me for the 50, the 40, the 50, the 60 stories I gave mainstream media during the, conspir uh, during the Charbonneau Commission. So let's dig on corruption and fraud that happened in Quebec. You were the main witnesses for the Charbonneau Commission. Mm -hmm. um, why at that time you take the opportunity to go out and talk about what you saw during you were um, the, one of the leader of the union of the FTQ construction? Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about Absolutely. This? Listen, uh, we have a duty, especially people like me who are business managers at that time or, or president of our unions. We have, a biz we have a duty to represent unions. We have a duty to represent our workers. So I found out really, really uh, quite early in, in my, uh, in, uh, when I was elected at the FTQ that there was a lot, a lot of fraud. And they were using union dues to do lavish expenses and going everywhere and doing whatever they wanted to. So I exposed them. And like uh, what happens to a great whistleblower, when you expose them, you get treated like dirt and you're pushed aside. Mm -hmm. So that's what mainly was happening. But what's kind of funny is whatever I saw in six months, anybody who was in the union for 10 years as a business manager would have seen it. Mm -hmm. So they decided to close their eyes because they knew that they could be a part of the problem or part of the solution, you know? So they s decided to stay with the solution. And uh, we saw that uh, Tony uh, Accurso uh, recently uh, is a result of his uh, trial that he need to do four years in jail. Were you surprised of um, this decision from the court? Tony Accurso at that time was uh, the biggest contractor in Quebec. And uh, I, I will just say it's due process, right? So he's gone to court. He, I think he, his silence was a mistake. He should have brought a lot of people with him. He, uh, you know, it, it takes two to tangle, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, and he decided to be honorable, I think, and didn't say much, so today he's paying the price. Mm -hmm. And uh, now he's due process, he's going to court, uh, Supreme Court to try to not go to jail for the next four years. On your own opinion, do you think it's a fair decision or you should have, have more? I don't think you should add more, but I think uh, a lot of other people should have followed him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, it's two to tangle, you know, and uh, you cannot get a business deal. You cannot get a major Quebec contract in politics if uh, you're not affiliated with somebody else on the other side who's giving you that contract. Mm -hmm. For being in the center of all the Unite, I'm talking about uh, the anti-corruption permanent um, Unite and as well, uh, we call it the... Uh, DPCP yeah. and other police investigation um, unite. What you can tell us about what you saw and what all did the trial happen and the investigation happen? Do you have something really important that you you want to tell us about the process of everything? I can tell you the process of all. The, every, I, I'm gonna mince my words here a bit, so I don't want to get anybody really. Uh, in, in a high wire or something, but I think police only know to investigate one way, okay? It's a crime, they wanna see a gun, they wanna see a body, they wanna see who did it, and that's how they go back, they take phones and they, they, take, they go back in there. So they're specialized in that type of crime. So white collar crime, you never see it. Corruption, you don't see it also. I don't think they had the men in power or the women in power to do it. And the government knows that. So sometimes the government, what they do, 
is they put these young, devoted policemen in positions that they couldn't solve anything if they wanted to. And it, between me and you, and maybe that conspiracy theorist that exists, is that done deliberately? Mm -hmm. Is it done so we can take five, six, seven, eight months to resolve a problem and then, oh, here in Quebec, it's called Are Jordan and it takes too long and then all of a sudden, it's swept under the rug and it's passed aside and let's go to the next one. Uh, what we heard about the UPAC, with Unité Permanente Anticorruption, is uh, the leader was Rabat Lafreniere. Le Rabat Lafreniere quote, quoted in, in the parliament saying, listen, every guy who leaked is a bandit. C'est un bandit, is a criminal. What we found out today, what we found out yesterday, is uh, maybe the leaker was himself. You know, so Quebec has a lot to look at itself. You know, we, we have inquiries, which is great because we, we expose the system every 20, 30 years. But we got to look at ourselves in the mirror and we got to say, us union leaders, we have to stand up and say, listen, we've seen it. Are we really defending the workers or are we defending the system that is corrupt? And in the, the, the police side, well, are they using the information they have to advance their own career? Don't forget that Lafreniere, when the budget came out, the Quebec budget came out, that same day he advanced his arrests and he got the vice prim, prime minister of Quebec, which was Nathalie Normando, under arrest. And he got another mandate. So we can look at that and say, is he trying to influence is his position is he trying to get a bigger budget is he so that's the questions everybody has to ask themselves you know a new pack has a huge budget and what they did and what the results are well we can we can look at that and really be not be convinced that they're doing their jobs you know mm -hmm. is it because it's they don't have the competency like i told you before or is it just that they're uh, in some way attached with the government or, uh, you know, in Quebec in the 1950s, you know, on avait la police politique. We had the political police under Duplessis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, is it that? Is it just another version, a 2.0? It surely looks like it. And um, were you surprised to hear that uh, we heard that the UPAC was orchestrated, the leak? of the information in the media. Well, that's what I said. Rabbi Lafreniere was the, the boss of that. He called everybody a bandit. You know, he says that it, the leak, the, the one who leaked this information is a criminal and will go and get him, you know? So I was kind of surprised, of course, you know, seeing that the man who says that there's a criminal, he's the one that leaked it and he leaked it through his own office and he leaked it through his friends, which, me, which is very, very dangerous because now it, we've seen the same thing with um, Ruby Wade and the abortion uh, issue in Washington, you know, where the papers were leaked. So they're trying to influence the judges, the Supreme Court, in a decision. Same thing here. What are you using the leaks for? You're trying to influence getting the people behind you in a certain decision. And that shouldn't be. That is dangerous. It will be used against you further. So it's a, it's a, it's not a two-way street. And it's very, it, to me, it's one of the worst things in democracy. And the worst thing in, in a, especially in a, in a police file, when you're using outside interference to get what you want. Mm -hmm. Do you think that will really end with a certain accusation uh, against them or you think that it would just pass like under the view of everybody and nobody would remember the, of what happened? There's a term we can say brothers in arms. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any accusation. I'm pessimistic. Uh, I don't really trust that much the politicians. I surely don't trust... Uh, the corrupt, uh, corruption aspect. I was one of the whistleblowers. I told them everything and uh, a lot of what I said, which was fact-based, which were uh, documents, nothing came true. Mm -hmm. So I'm a bit of disappointed. Uh, maybe they'll surprise me, but I don't, I don't really believe it. I mean, you know, they've been sleeping together for a lot of years. 
So uh, politics and police uh, are together. They're great bedfellows. So Father's Day is coming up, and uh, if you want to please your dad or yourself, uh, you can do so at rubennewstore.com. With our code DAD25, you get 25% on your purchase. So please don't hesitate to give a gift to your dad and yourself or friend if you want. Thank you.